So this is a much more recent project. I thought of it in 1983. And I presented to my boss at data point, and he said, get out of here with your crazy ideas. So I took that to have meant that the corporation was giving me permission to develop it on my own, <coughs> which I have done. I patented it in 2002 or something. And uh, so I think there, there's some evidence that I invented it. But like so many inventions, it's so obvious that it's almost criminal <coughs> to have a patent. <coughs> no. I now call this hyperthogonal structures. <coughs> it's hard to write at this angle. It's very hard to choose new words, let alone trademarks, because they've all been used pretty much. But I haven't found, but Google says, this is the only, I'm the only person that uses this. <coughs> we were earlier calling it ZZ structure, because the trademark is zigzag, but the generic is hyperthogonal structure. Now, what does that mean? We know what orthogonal means. OK, Lego blocks, you stack them up, you put them in various directions, but they're all at right angles. So we'll just generalize that. We'll generalize it to n dimensions. Now you would say, <coughs> what about <coughs> a 2D array? That's a, generaliza that's, that's, a, uh, that's a generalization. I say, yeah, but why do you need all those extra cells? In a spreadsheet, most spreadsheets are as empty as the Sahara because they define maybe a horizontal and a vertical, and suddenly the universe is bisected twice, and you've got all that unnecessary space that's, that you've got to hop over. Well, why have those cells occupied at all? <coughs> so there's no reason you can't have a bunch of cells like this. And this connects sideways. I'll show it with a line only for the convenience of drawing, but it's the same as these connections. And that and that. Why not? The, the rule being that the top of any cell may connect to the bottom of any cell, the left side of any cell to the right side of any cell, and so on in as many dimensions as you like. And this leads to some quite remarkable and difficult to visualize structures, but some of them are quite useful, as I'll show in a second. <clears throat> and, and for example, this is also legitimate, and, uh, and so on in as many dimensions as you like. But this can be sliced <coughs> into two-dimensional views any way you like as well. Now, what is the use of this? Well, for, for one thing, it subsumes every other data structure. It subsumes arrays. It subsumes tables. It subsumes semaphores. It subsumes objects, if you like, <coughs> all in one structure, which can be sliced and diced and reused without having ever to leave the structure. Now, look at big software today. You've got all sorts of different things which have to be made to interconnect. Whereas this doesn't have to be made to interconnect. It stays connected. If you insert a cell <coughs> between these two, everything else is just as, you, as it was before. So, it's, a, so it's, a, it's intrinsically stable. OK, I wasn't watching how to switch back to the other screen. Sorry about that. It wasn't that button. I better not just press buttons. <coughs> uh huh. Grant. Thank you. Okay. So here, <coughs> we'll start with our standard example, which is royal families of Europe. Oh, I should have a minute to show Adam's thing. <coughs> start with royal families of Europe. Let me see. I'll just do a quick search for that. Because this is too good not to see, especially for an audience of this caliber. Right. OK. <clears throat> so now um, we'll look at our standard demo, which is, oh, drat, sorry. I didn't have the right one open. Right. Did have the right one on. No, sorry. So, the, so Adam Moore, my colleague, put the royal families of Europe into a data structure. And this gives us a nice example. Sorry. Windows did something. 
<sighs> How do you get rid of that thing? Pardon? How do I just close it first? Oh. Jesus. Eight, oh, thank you so much. Right, okay, so I'll now make, make a fresh data structure to, uh, so you'll see it from the beginning. This, by the way, you can download this from the net. <clears throat> this is in Java. Work has stopped on it. But this, this version was done by Thomas J. Luca in Finland, and it's really beautiful. A little unreliable, but there you go. So here we have a, an array of four down and two across. These are the same thing seen in two views. This view is called stretch vanishing, which expands a cell to show all the characters. This shows this is the row view, which stresses the uh, the symmetries. So now, and but you can insert cells any which way into arbitrary structures. That scene. Let's go to the royal families of Europe. Here is a list in dimension two vertically from Albert at the top to William Douglas Hamilton, eleventh Duke of something or other, and uh, actually the eleventh Duke of. Hamilton and Brandon, and we can connect them, you see, because this is not a spread. Let's see you do that in Excel. So we have the one list in dimension two of the separate individuals, but here's an interesting perquisite. I'm going to step over here to this list on the right, which is kings of the Netherlands and orange, cells that connect all of them to one list on the right, thereby allowing you quick access to every one of them. So there are many possible things you can do in this structure, which we are only discovering. For example, I discovered the use in genealogy while I was waiting in a doctor's office in Tokyo. And uh, I'm sure there are many more. Let's go now to Queen Elizabeth. This Queen Elizabeth. Uh, sorry. And I'm going to pivot in the, right, in the left-hand window to find out how old she is. So we'll go horizontally. If you look at the top where it says dimension one, we'll go to dimension two, dimension three, dimension date. And sure enough, she was born in 1926. So you, you see that what we have here is a heap of cells arbitrarily connected. And so what, is, what are the uses of, these heap of this heap of cells? We're just finding out now. OK. Let's pivot in the right-hand window to see if she's married. Dimension two, dimension three, dimension date. Dimension marriage, and sure enough, there's Philip. And we'll pivot vertically to see if he has children. Dimension three, dimension date, dimension marriage, and dimension children. And there they are. And if we added dimensions, we could put in Diana and Dodi Fayed and all these people. <coughs> and if we'll go, we'll go to another view. I'm going to jump to the vanishing view. We'll, we'll pass some interesting things, which I'd like to show you. But uh, we'll go to vanishing view. Whee! presentation and vanishing view. And now guess what? Without writing a family tree program, we have a family tree. Just from the connections that were put into those initial lists. So, uh, well, actually, the, also the, the particular connections. So what this shows at is a generality of interconnection and structure that's extremely useful. I'm going to jump to a different one which I just did, which is kind of fun. Which is this one, yeah. OK, so this is one where I'm <coughs> keeping track of my present lists on this system. People, dates, awaited for me to install, to write, to send stuff on Xanadu Space, and people I have to call. But now let's look at the people thing. That's what I want to show you. So I've got a list of people, and the way well, I'll switch to a different view. I'll switch to uh, that view, row view. So here are the last names, and you see everything is in, or in order by last name. But guess what? It's also in order by first name, because all the first name cells have alike been put 
into alphabetical order. Once again, here we are. Here we are. That's, uh, as I say, one of the amazing uh, features of the system. And we didn't discover it. I mean, we just discovered it. So the principles are that, that any view is legitimate, and you must show the connections, and you must have swarfing. Why do you have to have swarfing? In order to give the eye and mind as much continuity as possible in going from one view to another. And given separate views and swarfing, all the rest falls out of the hat, all this wonderful alphabetical stuff. 